right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a little while since I've made an updated video, and that's really because I've been all over the place on this build. What started out as I needed to rework the rear suspension to work with the K-Swap, it quickly turned into absolutely everything had to be changed. I've gone to the front of the truck, the back of the truck, done a little more. So this is gonna be part one of two of complete suspension overhaul plus. And by plus, I mean, I've really done a lot more than just the suspension overhaul. I'm gonna go over everything that I've done with you right now. The extras, just the while we're there scenario, because we were already there. I did a little bit more than I should, I think. Took a big bite out of this project, but we're gonna cover what I've done in the last two months. And then the next video should be this truck is a complete roller again with all brand new everything. So let's show you what I've done right now. Let's take one last look at the motor mount kit. I went ahead and powder coated it just in a nice wrinkle black. It's smooth, it's slick, and it won't clash with any color combo that I go with in the future. We actually have to move the little truck over here in about two hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this welded in, bolted in, and then the motor will be in place. And we're gonna shimmy this bad boy over about two feet to the left. So we got everything laid out on the table. We painted and or powder coated everything that we could get off the truck that didn't need to be replaced. And then we ordered brand new for everything else. We have Johnny joints for the rear three link. We have new Honda parts for the front and a fresh set of coilovers that we're going to fabricate and mount in the rear. Before I actually put the front suspension back in, I have this Rust-Oleum reforming seal. It actually encapsulates the rust and then gives us a fresh black coating underneath. So we'll take all of this from looking all dingy and nasty to having a fresh black coating. I'm going to run over all of this with a wire brush on my drill. And if you remember, we actually cleaned the crap out of this a couple episodes ago. So it is clean. We're going to give it a good scuffing and then we're going to get into the Rust Oleum. So we have all of our prep complete. We have previously cleaned. We did the wire wheel on the drill. We knocked off any loose paint, anything that was caked up. So it's clean, it's scuffed. We have our paint, we have our paint brush, we have our canvas, and we have our artist. Go ahead and get this Rust-Oleum product on the undercoating. It can't look worse than it looks now. It will look better. And then we can actually go back to working on the truck. But I think the details are important. And this is a cool little detail. While we have it apart, while we're there concept, you already got the thing apart and you're working on it a year or two from now. I'm like, man, I should have painted that. Go ahead and paint that. Go ahead and get in there real nice and deep like. You'll appreciate it later on. We gave the underbody coating the evening to dry. This is the next day. You can see that it turned out really nice. This is one coat. One coat and it is not streaky. It's not overly textured. It's on there really well. It's very uniformed. It's a night and day difference from what I had. And I would recommend this Rust-Oleum underbody coating to anyone that wants a brush on coating. You don't have to get the aerosol. There's no overspray. You can really choose where it goes. It's good stuff. We are now ready to put the front suspension back on and back in the truck. We have new boots for the steering rack. We have a little bit of grease. We're gonna clean all that up, re-grease it, reboot it. We have the EG big brake upgrade on the spindles for the Acti. There's a company that makes a spacer that's gonna replace that, but I'm just getting everything mocked up. So when I do order the spacer, all the trimming has been done to accommodate it. You don't have to go this far, but I trimmed off the entire lip, the raised lip around the dust shield. Mine was interfering with it but it was also very distorted something else you want to do is notch the casing right here that way you can eject the wheel studs and get the longer wheel studs back in there without actually having to remove the bearing or just deal with all of that so we are now ready for the big brake upgrade whenever we decide to pull the trigger on that i wanted to do that before putting everything back on the truck for now we're going to work on our steering rack getting it cleaned up re-greased and rebooted As you can see, the rack is now ready to go. It's been cleaned, greased, and rebooted. All of our other new parts and our refurbished parts have been placed under the truck where they go. We got all the hardware there. Like I said, anything that wasn't able to be powder coated, we painted and it's all fresh and we're gonna install that right now. Thank you. 
We have some coilovers that we've purchased and we're working out the mounting positioning of that. I have a little bracket made for the back axle over there, but for now we're just focusing on getting these brackets made and I have to make one for the other side that I don't have yet. So here we have our two mirror image brackets made. I just cut this out of the same still I've been cutting everything else out of. This one goes on the left, this one goes on the right. So I've taken the time to measure out from the hub to center of the wheel well. I have this bad boy centered, it's where I want it. It's time to manufacture, fabricate this lower link portion. I have this steel tube. I went ahead and cut this down. The actual length itself is nine and three quarters. And then you have to factor in the fitting and then the Johnny joint itself. So I'm ready to weld all this up right now. I'm gonna get it tacked into place. We're gonna get this attached and then we'll be able to attach the coilovers to the axle tube itself. And that should be a good base for the rear suspension. We've got our fittings tack welded into our tube. We have our Johnny joints installed and we have our brackets bolted in. So this gives us the ability to either spin it left or to spin it right. Whatever we need to center the axle tube, we're gonna go ahead and get both of these tack welded into place and we will have a little bit of adjustability with that. There also have to be a lock nut on both sides to actually lock that into place, but we have plenty of room to put the lock nut in and still adjust back and forth as we need. So after all the work that's been done to the rear, I decided to go ahead and upgrade the front suspension as well. This is a DC Racing Mazda Miata full body coilover. Future episodes will be the install of this, how we're gonna make this coilover fit into this truck. We have this one where we want it. I've spent the last hour, hour and a half pulling measurements off of the axle tube, off of the drops, off of the front of the truck. Just getting this as absolutely close to perfect as possible. We will have adjustability on the axle tube with these links and other links that we still have to make, but the closer you can get it to perfect before welding this in, I think the better off we're gonna be. So let's get this tacked in on this side and move to the other side now. 